Welcome to Level Up TV at levelupyourgame.net with Disrepute and Vore. Alright, Vore. Alright there, Disrepute. Thanks for the warm welcome. That's alright, mate. Um, we are back again with another map guide. I think this is the fourth in our series. Although there's no real order to them. Congratulations, so. you can count. <laughs> this is uh, going to be Dreadful Place. And we've named it Dreadful Place Exposed. Um, Good yeah, name. So just before we go in-game, let's just remind everybody to uh, follow us on Twitter, slash or at Level Up TV, um, like us on Facebook slash Level Up TV, and subscribe to us on YouTube slash Level Up TV. These are mightily important elements in the future broadcasting uh, of Quake. So make it so. Do it. Yeah, Vor, you agreed with that? Yeah, I've agreed on that, mate. What better way to keep up with the latest happenings? Okay. By doing all of those things you said. <laughs> exactly. And if you use IRC. You can join our new chat channel on QuakeNet, uh, which is hash level up TV. Join it, stay in it, and chat. Chat to me and Vor. Yeah. We, we won't bite your head off much. Anyway, I'm going to go in game now. And uh, here we are, and Vor's point of view for Dreadful Place Exposed. Let's start off with a little rundown of the map layout. Yeah, just areas. a little general tour of the map, I guess, this. So here we are at the Red Armour. The a key point on any map. 50 health directly below the red, so nice amount of health and armour there. Plasma gun at the back of the room. And if you're into your little 5 health bubbles, well, there's two right there. And we'll go this way first. So we're leaving the Red Armour room. by this little corridor. Two healths. So again, that's quite a lot of health to be close to a Red Armour. So quite important to keep track of. A rocket launcher here. Lightning gun ammo is always vital. Machine gun ammo obviously not so much. Off bubble there. Yellow armor, so this is the only other armor on the map. Not exactly blessed with a high amount of armor for people to stack up with, but what there is is very important. 50 health. Grenade launcher ammo, not so important. <laughs> That's Lightning the big gun one to remember. Here. So you can see that this Oh no, I took the health. Didn't have done that. Anyway, rocket launcher, yellow armor, lightning gun. So, you know, good guns right next to that yellow armor. And this corridor leading to the red. So, that lightning gun is positioned in what you'd call a contestable position between both armors. And just near the mega health as well. So, lightning gun is positioned quite pretty much in between all those major health slash armor pickups. Shotgun right there. Another two health bubbles. Lightning gun ammo there, very important. And this corridor connects to the red armor room. Armor up there, of course. Those shards might be important now and then. Yeah, 20 armor in them. Up here, more shards and another 50 health. So the 50 health at the red, 50 health here, another 50 health there. That's three we've seen already. Grenade launcher. Good spam on any map, particularly here into the quad. More ammo that not many people will care about. 25. More fives. More random ammo. Shotgun here, and another 50. So that's four 50s on this map. That's quite a lot. Yeah, there is a lot of health on this map. Yeah, a couple more shards. And this force leads into the red armor room again. So, one more area. Just say that the quad was there, right? I'm sure they well, missed that. <laughs> maybe they did. Well, I said it. Another 25 health. A green armor. Not something you often see on the end maps, but it's there. Another lightning gun ammo. Yeah, three crates of lightning and gun ammo. Obviously, this leads back into the red. Down here. Leads into the railgun room. And through here will take you back to Mega. That's pretty much the map layout. Pretty simple layout I think. Um, it's not really multi-leveled. Um, and yeah, just so I would sort of divide it into f four boxes. You've got the mega side, you've got the red side, then you've got the yellow armor end and then the quad end. So 
not, yeah. not too complex. Alright, so we uh, start off in the red room then. And some of the key elements of this room, how you might hold it or contest it. Um, yeah, and I mean, obviously, this is, as far as this map goes, this is probably one of the widest open spaces. I mean, if you are sat back here, say, there's quite an actual distance to that corridor in there, or that exit down there, the exit on the left, or that entrance there. So, you know, if you're sat at the back of this room, say, a railgun, and it's actually quite hard for anyone to get in here. You know, as far as open spaces go, if you're looking to just defend this red room, then it can actually be quite hard for a team to push in, depending on what guns you are defending with. And you'd say, on this map, that holding red isn't something that just works like it would on other maps, because even though you've got the red armour here, the only weapon you have is this plasma gun. So typically what we see on this map is, even though red is very important, you don't often see four people in here frantically trying to defend it because, you know, if you're defending in here with uh, your whole team, then it means you're not pushing out to get lightning guns or out low. To, so you could find yourself at a weapons disadvantage. So you've got to be careful about if you're holding red. You, you can't just sit in here and lose out on all the weapon pickups. Obviously the red is in a vulnerable position and right ahead of it you've got four of the five entrances into this room now. If you think about that, five entrances into the room, you've only got four players anyway, so in theory it's difficult or impossible to defend each one perfectly. But the four entrances, we see Vor, they're all in his line of view, right here. Yeah, say I'm here to pick up red, I can be shot from any one of these. I can even be caught out from behind, although... The real threat is from uh, straight ahead, obviously. I mean, rail guns shooting in at you from down in there, down in there as well. You can be shot from rail from any of these angles. It's just those two are more likely, and also that one, of course. You know, you're very vulnerable as well from uh, someone pushing around this corner with a lightning gun. It's an easy shot. I mean, you've got no room to dodge on that platform at all. So getting caught out of a lightning gun, I mean, you could pretty much lose that entire red armor pickup straight away. That's another reason you don't want to be, you know, forced back into this room because as much as you'll still have the red to work with, you're just inviting pressure onto you where that red pickup could be quickly nullified. So there's sort of two angles to look at this um, this sort of setup on this map is the red is in a vulnerable position, but also in a defensive position you can keep an eye on four different entrances here. Um, in a sense. The, the, the fewer angles you need to look at to defend a room, in theory, it should be easier to defend. So the most threatening point in this room, in terms of somebody coming in surprising you, is going to be that back door from the quad. That is a very long way round to the room. But as Vore pointed out, the proximity to the red, in say for example that upper corridor with the lightning gun, means that you you could potentially take a lot of damage from those positions at all times. So there's not really a either side has an advantage in this position it's just as vulnerabilities from both sides <clears throat> yeah and typically when you pick up red you have to worry mainly as i said about this one so if you're sitting here you know you're gonna have to know red time because you know you you don't really want to just be sat in this position for no reason most times so you want to know red time and just hang back a bit because that eliminates the shots from down there you only have to worry really about lightning gun coming around the corner and you know when it's time to pick up red you can spam rockets if you have it or plasma to just deter anyone from pushing around and the same goes for this direction here I mean if you've been missing out on railgun pickups as a team you have to be more concerned about that position down there and again you know plasma spam is gonna put off anyone generally trying to rail you because they they don't really wanna take a stream of plasma because they're not going to have as much armor to work with if say your team's holding red and they're just trying to look to do damage onto you yeah so i mean the the main spots you got to, the main worry point is from the lg corridor because they can actually get the red all the other points they can just do damage to you they can't actually get up and get the red unless they're going to do a crazy rocket jump which you don't see ever really maybe yeah. on occasions but this is and the danger point for yeah. getting the red because if the other team knows the time of red, you know, they might have someone waiting here. 
and they might actually attack it as a team. You might have someone coming in from down here with a rail to shoot up. And then if they know the time, this guy can be more aggressive and just look to jump over to take it. So those are the real points you have to worry about. In this room there is the one spawn point uh, at the back right by the plasma which is why you need to keep an eye on that plasma pickup. If I'm, if Vor's standing up here and he's facing the direction that you should be facing to cover those four entrances, if somebody spawns behind him and that plasma's sitting there, they're straight in the back of him with that plasma and that obviously that's the highest uh, yeah. damage per second you can get. With any Depending on my weapon game. selection I should still be able to deal with them but it's just an added thing you don't have to worry about. I mean, the worst thing possible would be for me to be waiting here in good condition, let's say I'm trying to get the next red before power up, and then someone spawns there. I might kill them, but they might have taken away all the armor I had or taken me really low, so all of a sudden not really in a great position anymore. Yeah, so that's just I wouldn't leave that plasma gun sitting there. That's uh, probably the most dangerous uh, spawn you have to watch for in this room. The other danger spawn is directly across from the red armor, um, just about there, yeah. Because if you're sitting back and red just spawns and then they just happen to spawn there and you're not ready to shoot them off, they're going to dive on and steal that red away from you. So they're the two threatening points, the one getting the plasma spawn who can just get you in the back or the one over there who can steal away the red from you. Um, apart from that, in this room, there's no more spawns. There's close proximity spawns in, say, the, the staircase with the shotgun to quad. But that's not exactly a threatening point um, like those, those other two spawns are. So, I mean, in terms of defense of this room, it's kind of simple. You, If you were just going to sit back in this room, you're going to be under a lot of pressure, probably. But you don't play like that. You would always be moving out. So... We talked about the key points that you just have to look for, which is the LG doorway and mainly down in the rail basement and then just watching out behind any spawners at shotgun or if they're intelligent as a team moving around and attacking you from there. And really, it's a kind of strange room because you'd think, oh, it's a really strong room, it's got red armor, they'd want to have it. Most teams, they do rush it, but I don't know, you don't really need to defend it as such. It's, it's almost like a room where you just need to time the red and just be back for it. But the real Most often you're uh, defending the pickup of it. Yeah. The real pressure points on this map are around the two key weapons. Um, so yeah, I think that's sort of it for the red armor room. There's not that much to it. I mean, there's all those the little, the little points. Like, for example, where Vor's standing, you might want to crouch a bit and then you're out of range of the rail from underneath the basement. So thinking about angles like that when you're waiting for the red. And you've got to remember your, your head is a little bit higher than your viewpoint. So, and there is a head hitbox in yeah. Quake Live. So just thinking about that. And, and if you're standing this side, it's probably safer because there's less likely to be somebody coming through that left-hand doorway than there is danger coming from straight ahead lower doorway or the rail basement. So just thinking about those little things when you're in this area. But, I mean, there's not that much more to it. Remember the 50 health below the bridge is a very key point. And anybody running in and attacking you, if you do damage to them, the first thing they're going to do is dive for that 50 health. So that's the other element to be wary of. Yeah, and I suppose while we're in this red room, we might as well cover the kind of shots you can make in towards people who are looking to pick up the red. I mean, we already talked about someone in position here might know the time. They can come around with a lightning gun. This is you know, a terrible situation for anyone picking up this red. There's a lightning gun from here. Good rock now, the only, Yeah, the only hope of countering this is usually someone at the back of the room with a rail gun anywhere around that plasma. They can, you know, assist a teammate who might be in trouble getting lightning guns in that position. Or, you know, the guy who's waiting for the red can hit some great rockets or plasma, but they have to be pretty much spot on to kind of save any amount of armor you manage to pick up. And it's why I've all pointed out just before is that you might want to spam that point when the red's coming up just to make sure no one is around this corner. And this is where yes. something like a weapon like the grenade launcher might be pretty useful. And it's where precise timing is important because it limits the amount of time you have to spend here. You know exactly when red's coming up, so just found the corner, pick it up, and you're gone. But also, you know, rockets from here is concerned as well, but lightning guns are the danger one. Yeah, so the other major danger point in terms of the view they've got onto you in the red room is the rail basement up towards the rail. That shot. Yeah, shots like this are pretty typical. You can catch people jumping over from 
here to the red as well. You know, depending on the map situation, they might have moved out to Lightning Gun and then they're coming back to red. Easy shot as they jump over to it. You can see people stood in this area just in front of the plasma gun and look to shoot them. The 50 health, obviously, you can cover that from here as well. That's very important. I mean, if you if you've picked up a, a rail hit anywhere in this room, and maybe fake to back off, and they'll think the 50 is safe to go for, or they'll just go for the 50 anyway, giving you another opportunity to you know potentially pick up a kill with the second hit, or at least you know keep them extremely weak. 50 health quite often recovers most of the health lost by someone who's hit by a rail when they've got armor, so don't let them get back to full health. Yeah, I mean, Positions like this are, you know, the only real way to do it, to cover, uh, to counter this, is either send someone down here to deal with the railer, or they have to just spam you from this platform or anywhere in the room. That's exactly the way you would play the red then as a result is because this is such a threatening position and there's key items in this area you want to always have people down in this area and thinking about this this location denying railguns primarily as well but you can counter that position by placing someone along this sort of walkway side ready to counter them with say an LG or something um, dive around that corner down the rail basement but um, yeah so this back doorway is in a way the most threatening point in a normal period of map play, not around the power-ups. Um, there is a spawn in here. Um, and often people will get a shotgun spawn. You've got a couple of shards on top of that, and then they can be in on the red room and causing damage to you. Yeah, this position, if the team is you know, organising an attack on the red, and they've got people coming from the front, but if they've got someone coming from here as well, particularly if they've got a weapon, either a shotgun or even if they've come all the way around with a lightning gun then this is a very threatening position to attack from because straight away you're you're here you've got potentially teammates the other side of the red as well so you've kind of you can potentially surround someone in this room and if there's only one or two people in here then you should be coming away guaranteed with at least one kill but maybe more and you're either going to come away with the red which is ideal or you're going to at least heavily damage or completely kill their red armor. I mean as we said the likelihood is if you're defending the red room you're probably going to have a rail you're going to sit back by towards this plasma end and be looking at that the four entrances at the other end so this is a great almost ambush point to come from um, if you're the opposing team trying to win over this red area. So I mean any well, other shots? Well the last last place you can come in from to attack red is here. Now. This is nice because if you take damage you can back off into this health assuming it's up but as you'll see from here you've got you've got less uh, shots you can hit when you're trying to let's say LG someone up here probably the only weapon other than rail you could hit with in this position really because rockets you'd be you'd be aiming for direct hits and it's not likely but you know you haven't got as easy a shot see very little of their model when uh, shooting from this position you know, you can poke out if you've got a rail, look to rail people at the back. And if you've got teammates with you, then it's just, you know, another place they have to look at. So, you know, multiple angles of attack are always beneficial. But it's not a great route of entry. Yeah, I mean, it's easily counterable because of the close proximity to the area you're actually shooting at. And you're in a tight doorway. So, I mean, if they just spot you, that's one rocket into that doorway, you're in serious trouble. It is an advantage to have the 225s behind you, but the area you're backing off into is like a long route round and it's an exposed, dangerous route effectively, especially for spawners in the rocket launch room, which is just behind us as we look now. So that's why this... this this area of attack is less common to be used, but that's almost why it's a better area to also send someone in um, quite regularly if you can do it, if you're well coordinated. Because and depending on what kind of game's being played, I mean, sometimes you do see a prolonged battle over the Red Armor Room, so you can expect spawners, if they're deciding, you know, we're going to assess Red for a bit, you can expect spawners to come through here from, you know, this area of the map. So there's just that. Well, there's one more doorway, I suppose, which is directly below the the uh, lightning gun entrance with the shards. Oh, yeah. This is actually a really good spot uh, to use. It's, it is easily counterable, but you've got a really nice shot onto that red, and down if you've got a railgun down into the plasma end of the room. Yeah, depending on the match situation, like if the other team 
no, if they've been in red for a while but they haven't been getting any rails, then a position like this is actually quite hard for them to counter because you know, if they've been getting rails, then you could expect to be here and you could have a railer at the back of the room that side or that side and they might actually be able to just push you back straight away by hitting this job. If they don't have any rails to work with, then they're just going to be relying on spam. So this is quite a strong position for someone with a rail to sit in if they're only going to be going up against people spamming them with plasma or whatever other weapons are available. So it's a position you probably do want to use throughout the map because you have got 20 armor down here. That's only five short of a green armor. You've also got the lightning gun ammo, which both sides of the map will probably be wanting to grab over and over. Remember, there's three crates of lightning gun ammo on the map. There's one down in the rail basement. Um, there's one by the spawn by rocket launcher and there's one just here. The one by the rocket launcher spawn is such a vulnerable position that most of the time you're going to be farming these two ones that are pretty close to each other. There's one just here to the right and then there's the one just down by the railgun. So um, it's a good ambush point for either side of the map if you can expect either one at this choke point to whoever's got LG is going to at some point need ammo for it so they're going to either come from the red side or they're going to come from the mega side and then you can just catch them out here so this is kind of a key spot on the map even though it's only a small area and it's not really utilized that effectively by most teams but definitely an um, important spot to understand and uh, if we just go back to what we're talking about the 50 health it's the same with the ammo crates you can understand based on what players... So if you've shot a player, you know he needs health. So you can guess that his route is going to take him towards health. Now, if that 50 is not up, you can expect him to maybe back off, depending where he is, into a, an area where there's going to be health. So you can predict his route and predict what he's looking for. It's the same with ammo. If somebody's got a lightning gun, they're firing a load at you. You know that they're going to run out relatively quickly with lightning gun. So you know they're going to have to back off and get more ammo. And there's within this area there's only two key points where it's going to be able they're going to be able to get it through t down to the rail basement or through that doorway we just saw below so but it's the sort of information you can give to teammates as well I mean, if you've just hit a rail you know tell your teammates to look out for anyone going onto this 50 maybe I mean maybe you've got a teammate down here somewhere with a rail gun if he knows you've done some damage to an enemy tell him to look out for someone going for the 50 and all sorts of things like that So, yeah, that probably covers the red room. Uh, yeah. We could probably go into more detail about positions you could stand in to defend it. But as I say, like, it's really That's quite really simplistic on this map. Out. Yeah. Where you would just stand at the back and try and get a ranged weapon. Or you might stand right up here, or if you've got, like, a rocket launch to really push people back. But apart from that, your focus on this map isn't to just stand inside the red room. In fact, if we just go back a few steps and say, Normally on a map you might have a primary objective and on this map I don't think it's that clear cut. There is teams that think that red armor is the primary objective and some teams think the mega health is the primary objective but in reality the way you play this map the primary areas are the rail gun, the lightning gun and then the quad. So it's not as clear cut as some maps about holding a room with an armor item because the two sides of the map don't really have holdable positions in terms of the, ar the red armor and the mega health. Yeah, because the red armor you you could hold it, but then you'd be you'd be short on weapons. You know, you always need to be proactive with uh, the red armor on this map. And if you've got red, then move out this way to get lightning gun, or move out low to get rail, or even move out this way if you want to get rocket. Although I wouldn't value rocket as much. And that's just a risky route. Yeah, because if you don't have any other weapons and you're taking red to go and get rocket, then that could end badly. So yeah, I mean, we, we looked at sort of this red position now, so um, just talking simply about how you'd play from this red point, you're using it as a base camp to just get that red and effectively just move out. It's not a room you need to spend too much time in. You probably always want one person there, but the other three should be working the two items and hopefully get them on a kind of rotational cycle where you can move from lightning gun to rail or back again, but let's move out either way. So lightning gun, let's talk about that. Yeah, so straight around the corner from red to the lightning gun, but obviously things you have to think about is this is a very tight corridor. You could be caught in a position like this, hit by a rocket, and all of a sudden that red is gone, your advantage is gone. So you have to be very careful of people on these corners.
like this. There's many different corners you could be ambushed on coming from red. You have to be very aware. I wouldn't necessarily say cautious because sometimes it's better to rush it, but be very aware that players will be expecting you to come from that red room if they're trying to set up the lightning gun. And just with that, there's basically just one route out of the red room without it being a much longer route round. So that's the threatening point. And there's basically two blind corners between red and uh, LG. So I, mean, I think you can either be cautious and you know make no sound come round, or you can be you know quicker and cover the angles and spam your way round or whatever. But you actually want to be straight round more into this area rather than being caught fighting in this area. And you'll see many times in the games we stream where the red pushes out, but they're caught here against a lightning gun, and you know quite often. If you're looking to come out and get the lightning gun, you won't have one yourself unless you've been timing it. So you're going to be plasma against lightning gun in a position like this. And unless you get fairly lucky, you're not going to come out on top even with your red. So you, you actually want to get the fight really round this corner. And even if you open. don't get killed, it's probably going to be a stalemate. You might even get the kill, but you're going to have lost so much, you're just going to have to back off anyway. So you're not really going to get anything out of that. So it's, this is why it's an important way to almost constantly overrun this area so they can never get a grip and a block on it. Um, the key to this area isn't standing around in it. Again, this is a very uh, fluid map in terms of uh, the way you play it. It's about the time of the lightning gun. Knowing the exact time is pretty vital. It's not as simple as maybe a dueling system where if you're playing duel you can have a time and an item you can turn up on that time to grab it. In TDM, you need to be aware that teams will set it up maybe 10 seconds before, as much as that. So you would have to take that into account when you're attacking the area and trying to secure it yourself. So there is some element of trying to secure this area. Yeah, because this could be a high point of resistance as well. I mean, depending on the way the game's being played out. But they can always you can always expect to see two people at least. This is assuming they have a lightning gun time. You expect to find two people here. I mean, typically one here and someone in this area providing distraction so that if the person moving out from red does push all the way to here then there's additional ambushes from people positioned around this lightning gun so I mean most teams are just going to focus on the timing of the LG and just a simple setup like that there's I didn't say there's too much more to this area so the yellow armor the rocket launcher zone be aware of the spawn points around here. The spawn yeah, this spawn there. Very annoying. There is another one somewhere, isn't there? In that corridor there. Yeah. Yeah. So, um, for example, if Vor's standing up here and he doesn't have a weapon, this is a bit of a dilemma. Rocket launcher might be up on that spot, as we saw he just picked up. Now, what does he do? Do you drop down and go and get it? The problem is, if you drop down at this point, there might be a spawner there who's going to grab it, and then he's going to kill you if he's you know half competent with rockets because you're in a much worse position you've got to go up a bounce pad to escape or through a tight corridor across the path of his fire so it's a, it's a difficult dilemma here and it's ex exactly uh, why the lightning gun ammunition in that corner as well if you've run out of LG and you want to go and get that um, ammo it's a dangerous position to spawn in to get it because you might have, have no other ammo you drop down and think, well, I've got a lightning gun, I'll be tough once I pick up this ammo. He spawns there, he just runs straight away and grabs that LG ammo. You're in trouble then, you've just got to back off and take a lot of MG fire. So it's a, it's just something to think about. There's no necessarily right way of playing it, it's sort of luck of the draw. Whether somebody spawns there or not, or maybe you could try and keep track of the deaths and frags, but obviously if you just drop off and then someone dies, they might just spawn there anyway, it's, it's too late to... But just be aware of that position. On top of that, if you're spawning there and you see someone dropping off, first thing you do, you mop up the ammo. You make sure that they're not going to get that lightning gun ammo that they might be going for. We don't know if they are, but that's the likelihood is they're going for rocket or LG. And if you can grab the LG first and then even grab the rocket before them, then that's job done off a spawn. The other point in this room, of course, is the yellow armor. Um, is the only other armor on the map, of course, so if you're not getting red, you really need to be make sureing, uh, making sure that you're getting this. Otherwise, you're going to be, you know, no armor other than, you know, a few stray shards or green armor that you can 
get your hands on. So very important to keep this timed. Otherwise, you know, if you're if you're playing this side of the map, not getting reds, then it's going to be hard for you to get anyone in a great situation for quad. Yellow combined with mega that certainly makes you a contender, strong contender for quad. But you know, without this yellow, if people are just pushing out from red and getting the yellow as well, then you're going to find yourself in a very bad situation. If you do, say, control the red as well, this is a, a good example of the way you can push out and take real advantage. If you can win over the lightning gun area, you've as good as got a very strong position on this yellow as well. So if you can get one stacked player with red to take over the LG, he can also win over the yellow and just cycle around this area, just control this area. Uh, the yeah, yellow this is and a the sort LG. of position where if you've managed to do that, if you've managed to take your red, come to lightning gun, take yellow as well, and if you can just sit here for even... 30 seconds to a minute, then you should be noticeably changing the score in your team's favour. It's kind of similar to, say, pushing out from red on Grim Dungeons and holding quad LG yellow for even a short moment, then you can potentially pick up a lot of frags. Because it's something that the other team really can't allow to happen for long. And you can't have someone taking away this, the lightning gun. You can't really have them sit in this area for too long. It's something you have to deal with. So that would be kind of an objective, uh, a secondary objective to uh, the red team to push out win LG, but then the secondary objective to try and take over that yellow, get timing on that and control the area for as long as possible. Now, if we go round to the lightning gun position again, we can see as we push round to the mega health, um, it is quite an exposed area. So if you are working around this area, as soon as you push too far, this massive open zone, if they've got rail guns, that is a big danger for you if you try and control this lightning gun. So that's why it probably favours, this lightning gun area favours the team that's controlling the mega side. Because there's a lot more open to that end. Which is why we see a lot of teams in the modern era of play on this map are content with controlling the mega yellow side which is a lot more spread out but you have much better access to lightning gun and potentially have a better position on the railgun as well um, and that's probably why you would play this this side of the map although well, you have you have on paper an equal a kind of positioning don't you I mean it's not any further to either the lightning gun or the rail from here than it would be from red it's just whether or not you can deal with the people pushing out from red. That's yeah. what you have to weigh up. So, I mean, if we're looking at this side of the map now, then we just picture ourselves as the team that's content with holding this side of the map. They're happy. That's their tactics, the mega, the yellow. Now, if we're looking at the points, the danger points on this map, at this point, you've got the entrance route to Lightning Gun. That's probably going to be the biggest pressure coming from there. Yeah, I mean, so much so that any time that you don't have someone on this corner ready to counter it could be a time where they've pushed round and got position on your lightning gun. The other point's obviously through that doorway, that lower doorway. That's usually going to be pot shots coming through there. I mean, if people that's push through there... That's weapon-dependent, isn't it, really? Yeah. That's... Is there a railer there? Well, he's quite dangerous. Is there a lightning gunner there? Well, he's quite dangerous. But if it's any other gun, the danger isn't so high because, you know spamming let's say plasma from that doorway imagine it's coming the other way you know that's not really too much of a problem because you can duck in and out and avoid it it's the same with rockets as well it's very hard to spam rockets from that corridor and even lightning player, gun yeah any lightning gun can ambush like pickups of the shotgun or the health you know anything else it's not so much of a threat and they're going to be often very reluctant to go any further than this they're not going to want to come into this wide open room where you could have teammates up there, any of those positions. It's a pit of death, effectively, if you, you move yeah. into this area. And we've actually seen it on our, our casts, our, our live game streams. Yeah, quads we've seen quads come through. Come through. They see the tempting mega, say. They run yeah. into this open area, and even if the other team's only got machine gunners, they can take out the quad before he can make it there. So, uh, that's not as threatening position, only from shots coming in. So the Yeah, because as you can see that the rail, very easy shot onto the mega, particularly if you're sat here not making any sound. And you know, people don't always check the doorway. I mean, it's normally only you'll hear a sound cue or 
prompt you to look at this door, but if you just sat here, nothing out, you can switch to rail and it should be an easy shot if the player is unaware of you. Catch them jumping in the air at points around here, or Mega itself, and you know, you can either shoot before they pick it up or shoot after they pick it up, and that pickup has basically been ruined. There's obviously the shotgun and the, the health to th um, think about in that just little area that they might be trying to get the shot on as you drop off for that but I mean really it, this is just a one shot maybe position before they'd have to back off yeah don't get greedy in a position like this I mean you hit someone around the time in the mega you be satisfied with that I mean if you've got another weapon you could you could stay around here and sit in a position like this to wait and see if they're gonna try and push you but don't just sit here thinking you're gonna get away with just railing shot after shot because a lot of the times you will get countered. Remember it's a tight doorway, there's also a grenade launcher up there and it's perfectly placed to spam grenades right into this doorway. You often see that quite a lot, people just spamming grenades down there. Um, it's an easy shot. <laughs> just to block off that doorway effectively. So the other, obviously the other entrances to this side at Mega um, would be round through that uh, lower corridor on the rocket side to yellow or through the basement to rail and this is probably the other danger position realistically speaking they could come all the way up to quad as well up to the grenade position but the other major position you've got to watch for if you're holding the mega side is them winning over this rail position and railing yeah this is you. the other major contest point obviously the lightning gun was the first one and this one the other major contest point so much so that you know, we often see two or three v three in this position you know it's often so important for both teams that they commit most of their team to actually coming to the rail at the pickup time to actually come out with it because you know this is the sort of map where if you start to lose grip on the rail then no matter which side of the map you're mainly operating on that rail becomes a serious threat to you you can't let the rail get out of control there's so many rail shot angles you can get off, there's so many open areas and ranged areas uh, that rail is such a dominant weapon on this map. It is, it's pretty dominant on every map pretty much, but... I mean, someone's sitting here, I mean, it depends how far they push. If they're passive and they're right at the back, then they can obviously see to that 50 health in the distance. They can see anyone who might be going up that stair from Mega. If they push further out and use these pillars to dodge, Know, because if you don't have a rail yourself, you have to imagine that if your whole team is at the lightning gun or the yellow area being pressured from here, then without a rail it's actually very difficult to counter anyone sitting in this position. Hit you along this corridor, back, and they kind of lock down this area, so without the right weapons it's quite hard to counter. So you have to be very careful of not give up too many rail guns. Yeah, so this rail basement uh, area is of vital importance to the map play, and, and as I was saying, sort of, the Mega has some level of advantage over the the rail. In fact, it's got the height within this room, but it does have this tight corridor leading to it. So you could say it's relatively equal between the two sides of the map controlling this uh, rail. You've also got through that rail rail basement area to the um, red side this little room area here where they've got the green armor, they've got a bit of ammo and health so there's a little bit more stock to um, back up support at the railgun position. But basically there is a spawn point in this room um, if you get the spawn straight away onto the rail you're going to get that early rail. You've got to think about obviously second spawns of weapons but as soon as you can get a time on that railgun you probably want to have one person at least dedicated to keeping track of it throughout the map because it is just such a key position. This can be a threatening position as well, it again depends on the match situation, often you might play a whole game where nobody comes this way from red, but depending on weaponry, someone might decide they're so they got a rail and not much else, you know, this can be a good way to uh, put some pressure on this side of the map, coming round via the bounce pad or via the shotgun from red into a position like this. Now you can see activity at the 50, 
you can shoot down to the mega uh, health, you can cover that as well. Yes. You've got health up here to make use of. It's a really hard point to counter as well. I mean, you've got to come up a staircase or up a bounce pad. And if they're. Yeah. We see some of the absolute best players going to this position for a short period of time, just absolutely dominating their opponents over this area. And it's, 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 if you time it at the right point in the match, then it is the absolute best thing you can do. So, for example, if we're leading up to a quad, now you might say, on this map especially, we'll talk about it a bit more, but you might want to go 40 seconds early to set it up. But in that position, you might even want to go a minute ahead of quad to come to this position to just take apart any kind of stacked players or weaponed players they've got ready for that initial quad setup. Is a perfect position to send someone because there's probably not going to be a counter player here, up here, because you wouldn't want to stand up here. There's nothing really to do up here. You get a grenade launch, there's a bit of health, but you're not going to stand up here. So if you can send a player up here to win over this area, firstly they lock down that upper route, which is the default route that the Mega Health team on the side of the map would take to quad. And also, as Vos just pointed out, all the angles you've got on their team stacking up, they're going to be running from yellow, they're going to be running from lightning gun, they're going to be getting the mega, they're going to be going to the rail basement. You can cover all of those angles with a position up here. So it's a great spot to spend, send maybe your best player, a stacked player, somebody with a rail, with the right weapons, to come in like a minute before quad and just take apart the team on the mega health. He doesn't have to kill any of them. If he hits a shot a on all of, of them. You've got a lot to back off into as well. As I said, you've got this 50, 25 there. So, you know, even if you take some return damage, you know, presumably you've come here with guns, with a bit of armor, and it can be quite hard to remove someone from up here. You know, it's going to be go straight at them with a lightning gun. I hope that they don't knock you back down, but, you know, it's, it's not necessarily that easy to deal with. Yeah, I mean, and if you're playing this position, if you're somebody from the red side and you're going aggressive in this position, ideally you want to be thinking about surviving. You don't want to be thinking about committing all your life to doing it. You're, you're just thinking about the meta game. You're thinking about removing large chunks of their health and armor pre quad setup. So that's really what your objective would be here, just to yeah, weaken them enough that your quad setup is going to be perfect, and that's when you get all your frags. Ideally, you'll have more than a rail in this position, but you know it's. If you come here prior to quad, if you manage to sit here, then you're blocking this route in. And even if they do overwhelm you, you're going to hit some shots. Maybe you'll hit some rails down towards the 50 or from this corridor. But, you know, after you've hit some shots, maybe they're starting to machine gun spam you down. You know, you've got this corridor. Well, what are they going to do? They're going to come up the bounce pad. Whatever pad you want to call it, it's slightly different. But, you know, you're, you've backed off. If you've got a rocket, then coming through this corridor against you, it's going to be even more damage they take backing off further, they've got to come around this corner and all of a sudden you know, anything they had, mega, yellow or anything, it's kind of probably been taken apart. Likewise if you're holding the mega side of the map then this is a good route to take to cause some serious uh, damage to your opponent. So a minute early, there's no threat in this position, you might want to go through the quad route and put pressure in behind the uh, the shotgun doorway to red, as we talked about at the start of this this guide of the map. Or even you could put pressure on sort of in behind on the railgun uh, position from that bounce pad, because often they might have put people pushing right through to the railgun in their uh, in the railgun basement. So you can just drop down from this bounce pad in behind them. Yeah, let the fight get going. I mean, obviously from here you'll hear it. You know, once you hear your teammates who are best in the rail. You'll see people coming in from red, you know, you can stand in any of these positions and be able to see them or on their way them. to the rail. Yeah, but you know, you might want to just sort of like keep yourself hidden until they're actually in the fight and then you just drop down on them. <laughs> you <laughs> not, don't do it like that. Not quite like that though. <laughs> yeah, but you know, your teammates will probably be up there. They might actually be on the ground floor as well, but you know, rail's coming up. And you, you have either a rocket or a LG, hopefully, and you can be in their back this area, finish them off with the help of your team. A shotgun, if you're going to drop down shotguns, quite an ideal weapon, that close range. Yeah. 
I mean, you can just stand high and just hit some pot shots from this position as well, which stops them threatening your pickup of the rail. So, for example, if Vor's standing up here and his team mates are going to get that rail, all he needs to do is just cover this position, be, be an opening, an open threatening individual, so they are aware of him, and they're going to be less likely to push on his rail pickups anyway. So, um, this is almost like coming up to quad when quad's not coming up is a long distance away from the rest of the map play. But it's almost the icebreaker between the two setups of play, and it's something to utilize effectively. You are taking your way f yourself away from the key items. You're nowhere near red when you're at quad. You're nowhere near mega. You're nowhere near yellow. You're not. You're, li you're nowhere near LG, but you're a little bit near to rail, but you're not on it. So you're just going to get a good position, a threatening position. And it's a matter of experience, ambush. knowing when it's the right time to make use of this area. You know, regardless of if you're playing the mega side or the red side. Now, using this as a route to either attack down this bounce pad or pressure the red from here, you know, it's about knowing when's the right time to do that because, as I said, you are away from the major items. I mean, if you're in a position, you're here, waiting to decide what to do, then you can't quickly go and support the lightning gun if it's needed. You can't quickly get over to the yellow. So if uh, there's an attack over there by the other team, so you know you need to have the experience and know when's the right time to do that. Depending on how the match is flowing, because you know, every match, you know, they don't all play out the same. Not, not like robots playing each other. There's always a different tempo to games. Some are really fast-paced. Some are slow-paced. Some, some are really just generic games where nothing creative happens. Some that some are really creative games where people are ambushing uh, opponents all the time and. Yeah, you just have to read the situation and know when you can take advantage of these uh, kind of things. So, I mean, if we just go down to the rail basement again, then let's just sort of finish off that kind of area. In terms of defending this position and areas you've got to be aware of, so let's take it from the point of view of the red team. They're controlling the red. What you've got to be aware of in this position. Obviously, to the sides, somebody might have moved in here to the left or the right around the doorway to ambush you. Yeah, starting off, in fact, this doorway, they can ambush you. Um just right in that rail rail room they could do the same there's quite a few little ambush points here so you've got to be wary of them especially with shotguns close range or a rocket launcher um, obviously if you're attacking in at this rail position they might be up the bounce pad already and so they they've got that height advantage over you so yeah <coughs> things to think about if you don't meet any resistance so I mean if you're coming from red you don't see anyone in here I mean you check the corners or whatever don't just sit here. I mean, it can be risky, but ideally, you want this position here. Yeah, you might not they're, want to be if in they're view. Coming to the rail late. I mean, yeah, you don't want to be in view, but they're coming to the rail late. Now, if you've got a rail yourself already and you're just supporting your teammate who's trying to get a rail, I mean, it's sit in a position like this, and you might see them coming in the distance. Maybe they're slightly late or whatever, getting to the rail. Then you'll have an opportunity to hit them, and they might even think about not even coming entirely. You have to obviously be aware of people dropping off their case and from the grenade launcher, but you can get into the rail early and secure this position, maybe with plasma, shotgun, or rockets, and coming around this corner is a difficult prospect. Yeah, and in this map, you're probably not looking for item denials, you want your team to all get a railgun. So ideally you do want to go down there multiple players and support the pickups for your teammates to get off and get a clean getaway with it. That's ideally what you want. You don't just want one guy getting every rail and just making sure the opposition doesn't get it because unless he's an amazing railer and he uses <coughs> all his ammo every time. Yeah. Because there is such an advantage with rail on this map. Um so yeah, I mean you you this this every corner, you know, obviously in Quake and in this map. This map is kind of a bit of a strange one because it's got so many corners and yet it's so open. But it's everything. Places, yeah. yeah, everything is. Every key item is divided up by small corridors leading to it, which means there's a lot of ambush points, a lot of points you have to be wary of, a bit like Grim Dungeons, say. And then obviously, to then once you've got the item, you take advantage, a bit like Retribution or something. There's a massive open area to shoot across. So um, it's it, it's kind of opposite ends of the scale. This map, but it's just mixed throughout, which is why you need to play do two different game styles throughout the map. In fact. Um, in terms of if you're attacking this area with from the mega side then you want to get again push right forwards into the doorway 
as far as you can. Now, you might want to stop at this doorway because it's a little bit dangerous. If you can push even further and you've got the right weaponry to do it, then, yeah, you want to push even further. And it, obviously, if you stand this side where Voyage now, you're out of the line of shot of anybody from the Red Room. Because it depends how many, you've got to think about how many people are you committing to rail. Often we see people commit three players to rail. Now, if you've got three players standing around, say, here, maybe you've got two here and one at the back, but you know, these two players kind of block the shot of the guy behind them, and they're getting in each other's way. So you do want to push forward into positions like this, even if it is riskier. One player needs to be willing to take the risk to give his teammates more of a chance of winning the area. Because once they start coming from red towards rail, you've got easy shots in their back here. And then this guy here has got more room to fight you know, around these corners. And the guy at the back has got a cleaner shot as well. Now, if you're all in each other's way, stood on top of an item, then one player can breeze in and potentially kill all of you. Yeah, it's always about spatial awareness, understanding where your players are in comparison to you, what angles of shots they might have as well, and just spreading out and creating different angles for your opponents to have to fire at. Yeah, any other option for both teams, of course, was Mega pushes someone round to quad, they can drop down to help at the rail. And the same goes kind of for red here, you come from the doorway all the way up out this way when rail, where rail's due up you might hear the players are down there already looking to attack in and you can drop in behind them it's a perfect attack that really effective if you can utilise that uh, another, another good position in, in this room is railing from that back just past the bounce pad um, railing through, because you've got a covered position behind these um, pillars but you got a good rail shot there in they are quite difficult shots but you know as you say the cover is nice yeah so you've got to be wary obviously if you're on the opposite end to this and you've got to be use you've got to be able to use this position especially if you've got a really good railer this is perfect spot he's just the only position really he's got to be wary of here is above the bounce pad which is again why thinking about ambush positions etc is such an important element of this map so I think we're leading up now and we're up to the quad area of all. Yes, so the most exciting part of any map. What I'm going to say is we're going to stop this uh, first VOD and join us for the second in the quad area. <laughs>